Hi, everyone. Welcome to another show of My Child, My Voice Kid Connection, powered by the National Parents Union. I am so excited about another live show um, where we're going to talk about the Marine Corps, the United States Marine Corps. And I love bringing about books um, that tell you history and um, a little bit about that. And I'm excited to talk about it because I have many families and even my own husband who is a Marine. So I know they're excited that I'm going to be talking about this today as well as wearing my Marine Corps shirt. Um, but the book that we're going to talk about today on the Kid Connection show is um, Quiet Hero, the Ira Hay Story by S.D. Nelson. Now, I want to talk about this story because not a lot of people know about Ira Hayes, but you know a symbol that you may see. And then also what we're going to do is we are going to do what we call a firework cards, which is very fun to do with simple things you have at home. And I hope you enjoy that. And I'm going to go ahead and move this around. And like I mentioned, this is a great book to have for those of you um, that have family members or maybe your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, whoever may be in the Marine Corps. Um, this is a great book to talk about. And even if it's not just uh, the Marine Corps, but it is a great book to talk about military. It's a great information. And this one is one of my favorite stories. There's other books that I love to read that are children's books. So let's get to it and start story time for us. And I'm going to hide myself for a little bit so that, and of course, I still got my Gustavo book up there. Oh my goodness, I forgot to change that. Can you believe that, everybody? And um, I am going to start my um, our book of the day. And if you can see the symbols that I'm showing here, this one is a symbol of the few, the proud, the Marines. That's why I love, you know, bringing this about so that you can see this particular symbol. And this symbol we're going to talk about in this book and wondering what is it called? Why are we reading about this? So let's find out. So let's begin our story time. So our book is called Quiet Hero, the Ira Hayes Story by S.D. S. Nelson. And I love what it says on the inside of the book. When you open the book, there are two quotes, and I love these quotes. Real heroes are not perfect after all. They are human. Let us learn from their mistakes as well as their victories. And that was written by the author, S.D. Nelson. The other quote it says on here is, there is real friendship between us boys. We trust and depend on one another, and that's how it will be in combat. And that was actually quoted by Ira Hayes. Ira Hayes never wanted to be a hero. Still, he grew up to be just that, a true American hero. He was an ordinary man who did his part to fight for his country in World War II, where an unexpected event won him a place of honor in our hearts. Ira Hamilton Hayes was born on January 12, 1923, on the Gila River Indian Reservation in Sacaton, Arizona. Sorry if I mispronounced that. <laughs> his people were known as the Pima Indians. Ira was the oldest of four brothers. He was quiet, shy boy who loved riding a horse bareback and twirling his younger brothers around in an old tire swing. As you can see, he's twirling his brother around. Iris' family lived in a remote part of the reservation in the Sonora Desert. The landscape was beautiful, but the land was hot and dry. His parents were poor cotton farmers. The walls of their own their one room house were made of dry mud and the floors were hard packed dirt. They did not have electric lights or running water. To bathe they used a washcloth, homemade soap, and a wash tub filled with hot water. The toilet was a hole in the in the ground in a little shed called an outhouse. Ira's mother read the Bible out loud and taught him to read. 
Sometimes at night, Ira would read stories to his brother by the light of the kerosene lantern. At the schools he attended as a young boy, Ira was an average student. In 1940, when he was a teenager, Ira was sent to Phoenix Indian School, a government-ran <clears throat> boarding school for Native Americans. Life at the boarding school was very different from life on the reservation. The students used running water and toilets that flushed. They followed a strict daily routine. Girls were trained to do housekeeping so they could become maids. Boys were taught manual skills so they could be laborers. Ira felt out of place. Always quiet, he turned as silent as a stone. He was especially uncomfortable around the girls. Sometimes they tease him and pretended to kiss him. Embarrassed, Ira would run away or quickly climb a tree. Look at him climbing that tree, running away from the girls. <laughs> Along with the other boys at school, Ira liked to play sports such as baseball and football. But Ira's shyness kept him in the background. He was never a leader of activities. He was... He was content to be a follower, relatively unnoticed. Ira grew into a strong man, but he, but he was deeply lonely. The boarding school did not allow students to go home during the year, so letters for Ira only um, were only a way of staying in contact with his family. At night in the crowded dormitory, he often wrote home. He told his family about all he was learning and doing. His parents and brothers were proud of him. While I was away at school, something terrible was happening in the world that would forever change his life. The newspaper and radios carried stories of the Second World War being fought in Europe and Asia. Ira followed these war reports with growing interest. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii on December 7, 1941, all the young men at Phoenix Indian School wanted to fight back. Ira felt it was his duty as an American to serve his country by becoming a soldier. In August of 1942, at the age of 19, Ira joined the United States Marine Corps. Before he left, Ira went home, where everyone gathered to say goodbye. The tribal elders praised his loyalty and patronism. Ira was ready to carry on the prima tradition of being an honorable warrior. Private Ira Hayes was sent to boot camp in San Diego, California to receive basic training. Many people thought the Indians as fierce fighters, so Ira was allowed to train for combat along with the white soldiers. Other men of color were forced to be cooks or to carry supplies. Ira liked the discipline and challenge of boot camp. The daily routine he was accustomed to at school had prepared him for military regiment. He and the other new Marines practiced shooting rifles, throwing hand grenades and other, white, other war tactics. After boot camp, Ira chained, trained to parachute out of airplanes. Later, he was promoted to private first class. The men in Ira's battalion became best buddy, and Ira finally felt as if he belonged. He was no longer lonely. This was the happiest time in his life. So what I mentioned here earlier about the different people um, that had to only do certain duties you got to remember this was history way back when so this is the reason why we're reading this with their training completed the marines boarded transport ships and set out across the pacific ocean on march of 1943 over the next two years ira fought in three major battles against the japanese in the pacific the soldiers endured the hardships of war, and many men, both American and Japanese, were wounded or killed. Ira did his very best to be an honorable warrior, more than once in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He proved himself to be just that. His fellow Marines knew they could depend on Ira in a heated fight. Ira was not shy about being a Marine. 
In his letters home, he said he was proud to be fighting along such brave soldiers. He was committed to bring honor to his family, his people, and his country. And you can see all of them fighting in combat. In early in 1945, Ira's battalion was sent to Iwo Jima, a tiny volcanic island south of Japan. With its two airfields, Iwo Jima was an important base for Japan's defense of its homeland. The Japanese were determined to stop the Americans from gaining control of the island. Shells roared overhead and bombs exploded as the Marines landed on the shore of Iwo Jima. The American soldiers slowly battled their way towards Mount Shurabichi at one end of the island. The Japanese had dug caves in the ground and were hiding everywhere. When the shooting began, became too fierce, Ira and the other soldiers laid face down in the black sand. None of them wanted to die, but the Marines were there to fight, and fight they did. On February 23rd, the fifth day of the battle, a group of Marines fought its way to the top of Mount Shurbachi and planted a small American flag. Even though the battle was still raging, the flag signaled the end of Japanese control over the high ground of Iwo Jima. A little while later, a Marine commander decided to put up a bigger flag, one that would be seen for miles. Ira and a small band of soldiers were sent to do this. Upon the battle-torn summit of Mount Shirachi, Ira and other Marines looked for a flagpole. They found a long iron pipe aimed the rubble. A third Marine attached the bigger flag to the pipe. Then three or more men joined the effort to raise the heavy flagpole. You can see they're trying here, and you see one soldier holding the flag. Joe... Rezenthal, a news photographer who accompanied the Marines to Iwo Jima to record the battle, prepared to capture the action. As the six soldiers struggled to push the iron flag up into the wind, Rosenthal swung his camera into position and snapped a single picture. The men watching below and, no, and nearby ships cheered and yelled as the flag rose in the sky. Rezenthal's photographer photograph turned out to be unforgettable. When people all across the United States saw the picture on the front page of their Sunday's newspaper, they were all awestruck. Tears came to the eyes of many Americans everywhere were filled with gratitude at the sight of those brave young men raising their country's flag in the middle of a terrible battle. And you can see Rosenthal is there to, ready to take that picture as they're putting up the pole. The Marines finally won the battle for Iwo Jima 36 days after landing there. Thousands were wounded or killed, including three of the men who raised the flag with Ira. When the three survivors returned home, they were treated like heroes. Ira was shocked to find thousands of people cheering for him. He didn't think he deserved all the attention. Ira told the crowds that the soldiers who died on Iwo Jima and in other battles were the real heroes. Separated from his Marine buddies and surrounded by strangers, Ira's loneliness returned. Yet whenever people saw him, they wanted to celebrate. They brought Ira alcoholic drinks and praised the quiet Pima Indians for his heroic deed. The drinks helped Ira cope with his feelings of being alone. Felix D. Weldon, an artist serving in the United States Navy, was spellbound by Rosenthal's photograph. He thought the courage shown in the picture reflected America's will to win the war. D. Weldon immediately wanted to work on a small statue, sculpturing the bent knees and straining muscles of the six determined young men raising the flag. Iris stood at the back of the group, his helping hands raised high above his head, just as in the photograph. Shortly after, D. Weldon was asked to recreate his statue on a monumental scale. Everything about the sculpture would be gigantic. The boots, the helmets, the soldiers. 
The result was a colossal bronze statue with 32 foot high figures raising at 60 at right raising a 60 foot flagpole. Ira found it hard to adjust to civilian life after the war. His loneliness deepened and turned to despair. As he drank more and more, tragically, he died on January 24th, 1955, just short of the 10th anniversary of rising the flag on Iwo Jima. Ira Hamilton Hayes was buried on a grassy hillside in Arlington National Cemetery. America's quiet hero rests there amongst thousands of other servicemen and service women who fought for the United States from the Revolutionary War to the present. Nearby in Washington, D.C. is the majestic United States Marine Corps War Memorial. D. Weldon's inspiring bronze statue stands there for everyone to see. Ira will forever be where he was the happiest with his Marine buddies. Together, this mountain of men raises the American flag in the glory of all time. Now that ends the story of our story time, which is Quiet Hero, the Ira Hayes story by S.D. Nelson. I hope you enjoyed this fun fact of history that you just learned today. Um, what I love about this book is the author's notes in the back of the book. You can read about, you know, Ira Hayes. You can read about Iwo Jima. You can even see the picture of the actual soldiers right here on the right side where it shows them pulling up that famous photograph of the flag of the United States flags. And now on the right side, on the top right, you see um, Ira is with um, Rene Gujian and John Bradley, who were the other two heroes that helped him rise that flag. They were photographed here um, in Rosenthal's photograph. Because uh, they were called back from the front lines and asked to join like a bond drive to raise money for the United States war efforts. And so you see them next to the famous picture. So it's really neat to um, look at the back of the book because it shows you the history and tells you everything about World War II, but specifically about Ira Hayes, his background, his schooling, the famous picture, and then what that statue meant or that photograph that later became a statue. So this is a great um, way to read about history and why we celebrate, you know, certain celebrations throughout the year. And as I mentioned, the Marine Corps birthday is November 10th. And see, here is the actual bronze statue of the United States Marine Corps War Memorial, which is found at, you know, which is in Washington, D.C. And it is, it is very huge. I mean, this picture shows you a small, I was actually there. I was fortunate enough to take some students um, to DC and we traveled to um, Arlington National Cemetery where we saw this particular um, bronze statue and to see it brings a lot of here. And then I wanted to show another picture of Ira Hayes, a very more clear picture of this Marine that was part of this story and about him. You see him here in his uniform. And then as well as a clear picture of the United States Marine Corps War Memorial, which I mentioned, it's a very clear and beautiful picture. And like I said, this statue is huge. This, it's, um, if you were to stand next to it, you would be this itty bitty little person on the side because that's how I was. Um, <laughs> it's not as... Um, big as or small as you think this particular monumental statue is and it, it's really gorgeous um so i wanted everybody i got an echo on my back card let me turn off the sound so we can hear myself clearly um but i hope you enjoyed this particular story i really am fond of this one and I'm going to end my slideshow and get back here so that I can come back to you guys and we can start our craft. Hi, I'm back. And let me remove um, 
this. And like I said, you can find this book anywhere. And what's really great about this particular um, author that I really love about is on the back of the book, and I'm going to show you here, he talks about, he's written so many different books that I, I love. And one of them is about Crazy Horse Vision um, that you can see here. Um, I'm going to put a little closer so you can see. And you can read about all of his books, but this is one that hits home for me because I have a lot of family members and friends who are Marines. And this is a great story that a lot of people don't don't really know the story of uh, the Marine Corps War Memorial and what in fact happened during World War II. So um, we are going to start our craft of the day. I'm so excited about that piece. And the reason why I chose a firework cards is, um, if you know someone who is currently serving in any military branch, doesn't have to necessarily be the Marines, you can write them a card and something homemade because you know what? They love when you send something homemade. It can be a family member. It can be your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt, your grandparents, whoever that you know, or even a neighbor that you know that is serving in our country. It is great to send them a little either thank you note for protecting our country and serving our country, as well as letting them know you're thinking of them. So let's get um, going with our craft. I'm going to move my camera down and tell you all the supplies we need for our craft. So I'm going to move my camera. Oh, before I do, one thing I always forget, you know, I always have to remind everybody is you got to wear something. Um, we are going to do paints. So I am going to put something to cover myself so that I don't get paint on my clothes. If you have an old t-shirt or um, even an apron, you know, make sure you put that on so that you don't get your clothes. Um, I don't want any mom and dads getting mad at me because the uh, kids came over here with some paint and got it all over their clothes. So I'm reminding everybody, if you have an adult in the family, please have them help you with this craft. Um, and make sure you have something to cover uh, yourself so that you don't get your, your nice, pretty clothes dirty. So let's move my camera down. And then what you're going to need is first, I'm going to show you a plate. Um, you're going to need just a simple plate um, for your activity today. This is this one of the supplies. And then I would say any kind of dish soap. So make sure you ask whoever the adults in the family is in your household, whether your mom, your dad, your grandparents or whoever, ask them if you can borrow a, uh, a dish, uh, like a, a brush that you can use. Um, I used a round dish brush because I found it easier when I was doing my painting. Um, as long as you put water on here, um, it will come off. If not, um, apologize for them that you will get this with full of paint. <laughs> Um, so that's why I'm using a round brush. And then, um, also what you're going to need is some paint. I would say because we're celebrating plus the Marine Corps birthday and veterans day that is happening this same week, I using red and this is just acrylic paint, um, black, and then also I'm using white. And then another thing you're going to need is construction paper. I'm using black today, but if you have white, red, whatever color you have, use that. Um, if you are going to, I prefer to use the black or even the white because these three colors will really show through, um, when we're doing this craft today. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to move everything out of the way is I'm going to get this piece of, uh, the plate and then what you're going to do and I'll make sure you have a paper towel or wet one by you, because if you get paint on you, you can wipe it off. I just pour a little bit of the red um, paint and then a little bit of the black. If you want to use black, I'm not going to use the black right now. I'm going to use, um, and then you can use blue too. Um, I forgot to mention, you can use the colors of the flag, red, white, and blue. Oh, this one I don't have. My white doesn't want to come out. So we're going to put a little bit of, sometimes my paints get a little finicky and they don't want to come out. So we're going to put the white. And then, like I said, if you have blue, if you have red, black, 
put those colors on there. And so while you're getting your palette ready, you can put a little bit more paint and I'll show you that in a minute. But before we start, make sure you get your construction paper and you fold it in half. Doesn't matter which side, whether you want to fold it to the left or to the right. Fold your paper in half and put that crease, put your finger here to make that crease so that it doesn't come undone. You can do it this way or you can do it this way, however you want to do your crease, okay? Um, make sure you get your paint. And then here's where the brush comes in handy. Now, this is going to take some steps on doing your patriotic fireworks craft card. What I did um, in order to get the card going is I had to use one paint first and then put it on multiple parts of my card. So I'm going to put a little bit more red on here. And then all I did, and all I'm going to do is swirl. Uh, the reason why I like the round is see how I can make my brush go in circles. That's what I want. I want to make sure that all of, you know, the brushes are full of paint. Right up. And it's going to look like this. See how I did red so you can see what it looks like. And you can see that all my brushes, some of them still don't have it. So I kind of swirl it in there. But a lot of times I just squish it down so that it can. And like I was mentioning, make sure you're around uh, something that covers and make sure you have a surface that doesn't get dirty. Um, and then all I do is I press it down. And it makes almost like a firework. See now, if you're going to do multiple ones on your paper, make sure that, and they all, the, what I love about this is that it's always, you know, it's, it's different sizes and different shapes, just like a firework. A firework can look like this. A firework can look like this. So, but you do have to let this dry. So, um, I had to wait at least, um, you know, about, 30 minutes. I gave it 30 minutes. Um, if you have spots that are thicker, you might have to wait an hour. So when you do that, before you start on your second color, um, make sure that the first color is dry. And then you're going to do repeat what I mentioned here. You're going to bring your plate and you're going to get your, make sure you wash out your bristles. Like when this is drying, wash out your brush in water and then start all over on your second color. I'm not going to show that here, but um, I'm going to show you and I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to show you the different ones that I have here. So here's the one I did. Mine was a smaller brush that I used earlier. I didn't press it too hard because I wanted to show you that I did like five different ones. I used my white. I used red. I used blue. And I squanched it on there and I let them dry. And this is what it looks like. So it looks like fireworks. Okay. And what I would suggest, if you are going to send this, make it a personal card, someone, you know, or like I said, a neighbor or how any very, this is what we wrote on here. Thank you for your service. Home of the free because of you. Thank you, Wendy Gonzalez, Neil. And I even put, because they always love to hear where you're from. Um, I always put, if, you know, if you're sending it to someone you don't know, it's great to know, hey, I'm from Houston, Texas, because a lot of times, you know, all of our soldiers are from everywhere. But to know that you're from Texas thinking of them, they really do appreciate that. And that's my little um, firework cards um, in regards to this particular one. But I also wanted to um, let you know that, as I mentioned about the United States Marine Corps, birthday is on November 10th of every year. The U.S. Marine Corps and Marines pay tribute to all Marine Corps birthdays as they, sim as they do, you know, like symbolizes and tr traditions. This is the reason why they do it. And then this year, the Marine Corps turns 246 years old. 246 years old is the Marine Corps. The birthday itself was formally recognized back in 1921 by Major General John Lejeune, who ordered um, November 10th of 1775 to be officially recognized as a service-wide as a Marine Corps birthday. 
And just to give you a little bit more fun fact about the Marine Corps birthday that celebrates the history, the memories of those who served before and rekindles the bond that unites all generations of, of Marines. Birthday balls are held all over the world for Marines to honor and celebrate their legacy since 1775. And the fun fact is Semper Fi is a shorter version of Semper Fidelis, which is Latin for always faithful. It's meant to, to signify the dedication of the loyalty that Marines have for their country and fellow Marines, even after they become veterans. Another fun fact is Marines celebrate this day on the Marine Corps ball all over the world. At these balls, the cake is given to the oldest Marine in attendance and then it's passed to the youngest, to the youngest Marine. This signifies the passing of traditions from the old to the, to the young in the Marine Corps. Marines cut the cake with a sword at the birthday, on the day of the birthday. The oldest issues a weapon in the United States Marine Corps arsenal. It is called the NC, NCO sword, and it's carried by a non-commissioned officers. Remember, no matter where Marines are on November 10th, they gather in celebration. Every Marine deserves to hear the words, happy birthday, Marines. So let me pull my thing up here and I'm going to take off my, my apron. And um, I wanted everyone to know, you know, like as I'm giving you these, these fun fact about, you know, the Marine Corps, um, I just want to say to all the Marines near and far, thank you. And I'm wishing you a happy early birthday. <laughs> um, happy birthday, Jarheads. Simple Fidelis Marines, I wanted to tell you, thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you've done. To my uncle, Ramiro Ariola, my, my little brother, Mark Herrera, my, um, my son from another mother, Guillermo Almos, and most of all, to my husband, my Marine, Troy Neal, I wanted to wish you all a happy early Marine birthday. And to find more information, I will put about the United States Marine and the Marine Corps birthday. Please visit the marinecorps.com. I will put this in the comments so that you can read more about the histories of the Marine or if you're interested in joining, if you know someone who is interested. Everybody, thank you so much for joining um, the Kid Connection show and, you know, going along with me about this, this beautiful story um, and the history that it teaches us. And I hope you all have a great day next week. Um, I'm actually going to continue with some other um books that I would love to read about. The next one is Goodnight Marines. This is another favorite of mine. It's going to tell you a little bit more about the symbols of the U.S. Marine Corps. Um, this is another favorite of mine we'll read about next week and we'll have something fun for you to do as well. As well as um, the day after, it is Veterans Day. So make sure that you tell any veteran you know, you know, thank you for your service. And I hope you enjoyed making our little craft of the day, and I hope that you send it to someone who would really be happy that any, in any military branch to receive a letter from someone. Everybody, thank you again for watching My Child, My Voice Kid Connection show brought to you by the National Parents Union. And as I mentioned, happy early birthday, Marine Corps, Semper Fidelis. Have a great one. Hoorah.